to Kevin Minnick of the Courier Post. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Sully. How are you today? Sorry about that. We ran long with uh, McGarry. He likes to talk, so. He, he does <laughs> like to talk, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, let's get right into it. High school football started last night with uh, what the, one of the big games in South Jersey was St. Augustine versus Malvern. Uh, seems like all, all the big guns were out there. Myself, uh, McGarry, you, uh, Anastasia was out there. So uh, kind of a who's who uh, of South Jersey sports reporters out there. Yeah, you know, you, you get you get the, the only game in town and you get a pretty good team. So, uh, you know, we all got to get out there and, and check it out. What was your impression of the Hermits? Uh, obviously, a, kind of a shaky first quarter, first half, but they really solidified things in the second half and, and uh, got things rolling behind uh, Zamat and, and Kyle Dobbins. Yeah, you know, they, like uh, like Mike had said earlier, I think a uh, little bit of nerves uh, with, with a lot of the kids. You know, you got some first-time starters out there. You got some kids who, uh, you know, uh, didn't get a whole lot of playing time maybe last year that are now in, in thrust into a role of, of uh, a little bit more importance. And, uh, you know, it kind of showed early. Uh, DeMont did overthrow a couple of balls, and he did have some – some penalties here and there and some things that, you know, I think, it, you know, you don't really – you hate to have to see, but you kind of know are going to be coming in that first game until you kind of get adjusted to to the speed of the game and, and, and the atmosphere and the fact that, you know, we're finally playing another football team and we're finally, you know, finally playing a game that means something. But, you know, they settled down. Uh, you know, they, the, the block field goal attempt at the end of the first half you know, uh, really, really could have been a, a major momentum swing, but uh, you know, St. Augustine made the adjustments at halftime, did what they had to do, clamped down defensively in that second half. You know, they they, they don't give up any points in the second half. You know, Malvern gets two points on a safety, and uh, and they shut down the quarterback pretty well. So they did a real nice job of of making the adjustments that were needed. And then, like you said. Uh, Zamat had himself uh, he really settled in maybe around the middle of the second quarter or so, played a real strong second half. And when you have a guy like Kyle Dobbins, you can give him the football. I think he carried the ball 25 times, you know, and, and he's a big, strong back and, and, and can run the ball with authority. you got to feed him the ball, and they did that. And at the same time, too, you have to give a little credit, too, to True Robinson, a uh, sophomore who, uh, you know, played a little bit here and there last year, but – he springs two two pretty decent touchdown runs last night, really showing that St. Augustine is a little bit more than Kyle Dobbins in the backfield. It, it was kind of funny. I, I think they were in their first series, and uh, they, they had yet to give the ball to Dobbins, and I heard somebody from the stand say, hey, he, he ran for 1,700 yards last year. Give him the ball. So the, the fans obviously wanted to see him uh, maybe a little, little too impatient there in the first series, but uh, you could see what kind of a special back he is. Yeah, you know, he he's a, he ran for I think, a little over 1,600 yards last year, uh, second in South Jersey behind uh, Josh Davis at Gateway. And uh, Kyle comes back as this year's, you know, leading running back and uh, an all-South Jersey pick. And, you know, you got to remember, too, the kid's only a junior. And, uh, you know, obviously when you're in the stands and, and, and you know <laughs> you have that kind of commodity, you want to see him touch the ball. But, you know, obviously St. Augustine had a game plan uh, going in. Like maybe they – Maybe they they realized that okay, Kyle's been through this this opening day jitter stuff, and and he's okay. We got to get Josh Zamat a little maybe kind of settled in, and, and really try to get him to start out strong early. So threw a couple passes, you know, a couple overthrows, but they bounced back. And uh, you know, he after the game, Josh admitted, you know, he made some mistakes, but he knew how to fix them. And and between uh, what he was able to do, what the coaching staff was able to do, they you know clearly made some uh, some fixes and. Next thing you know, they they got himself a nice win. Kevin, I think we we probably haven't given the defense enough credit yet this morning. Uh, they played a whale of a second half. You know, guys like Dean Kalinich and um, you know that linebacking crew. Joe Bonchak had a at a interception that almost went for a pick six, and a really nice defensive front seven they got there at St. Augustine. Yeah, you know, uh, I think sometimes we overlook the defense. As a unit, and uh, we, you know, we, we we highlight the guys that score the touchdowns and put up the big, huge stats. But you know, defensively, like you said, they did a real nice job, and uh, you know, they they had to stop the passing game. And um, you know, uh, Kevin Doyle for Malvern Prep is a junior who's got himself 12 college offers already, and, and is a pretty pretty decent quarterback. And I think he uh, he was incomplete on his first eight passes of the second half, and 
clearly wasn't as effective in the second half as he was in the first. Um, you know, they got to him a little bit more, put a little bit more pressure on him. And, uh, you know, uh, the DBs did a real nice job of, of uh, you know, staying with the receivers. And like you said, you know, those guys up front, you know, they put pressure on him. They, they stopped him at, at the line of scrimmage. Uh, the run game shut that down pretty much completely. And, uh, you know, they, they did what they had to do. And, and, and that unit, you know, no superstars right now. They lose Jim Brady from last year but uh, to graduation. But this year's group, maybe, maybe more of a, uh, of a collective unit than, than, than maybe they were last year. So, uh, you know, obviously a long, long way to go. But uh, uh, they can be very, very proud of what they did, especially in the second half last night. We're talking with Kevin Minnick of the Courier Post. Uh, Kevin, an interesting kid to me is this, this kid, uh, True Robinson, a sophomore. Uh, we saw what he could do as a running back, but also plays defensive line. You don't see that too often where a running back uh, plays the whole game on defensive line. Yeah, especially at a school like, you know, they've got some depth where you might not have a lot of guys go two ways, but, uh, you know, played real well, and he's not a big kid, you know. Uh, uh, standing next to him, he's, he, he looks like he's maybe about 5'8", and 150 or 60 pounds, if that, but, uh, you know, if, if, if you can play the position and, and uh, you know, you know you got your technique down and, and you're effective, then, you know, I guess 5'8", 150, 160 is okay. That's what made that you know, so much more impressive him and Dobbins combining for over 300 yards rushing while they both played, uh, the whole game on defense as well. Yeah. You know, uh, I think maybe as the season goes along, maybe, maybe they'll try to, to give them a break here and there, but, uh, you know, right out of the gate, first game of the season, you got to be impressed with, with what they were able to do. Uh, Kevin, talk a little bit about St. Joseph head coach, Paul Sacco, he's been around the game forever, it seems, and coming up on 300 wins, he's two wins away. How impressive is that in high school football? You don't see many coaches even get to 200 or 150 wins, and he's right you know, on the doorstep of 300. That's, that's amazing when you think about it. Yeah, you talk to coaches that reach milestones, and, and more times than not, they'll tell you, well, I've either been here a long time or I've had some really good players. And uh, what Paul Sacco has obviously done, he has been there a while, and he has had some good players, but he gets the most out of the guys that he can possibly get. And, uh, you know, I guess, you know, when you have talent, wins will, wins will come, but you've got to be able to find a way to mesh that talent and, and cultivate it and, and get it to work well in the system in which you want to run. And he's obviously done that. You know, he's, he's one of the best coaches South Jersey has had. Um, obviously the most victories in South Jersey history, but he's a really, very, a really, really great guy. And if you talk to him, very mild-mannered, you know, always respectful of everyone around him. And clearly, you know, when you look at the class coaches in South Jersey, at least in my opinion, he ranks right up there near the top. Kevin, let's talk uh, briefly about Cedar Creek, a team that's coming off a South Jersey Group 2 championship. Uh, lost some good players, but definitely has a lot of talent back. But they're really going to be tested. They got a, a brutal schedule this year, particularly in the crossover games. They're going to play teams like Camden and Haddonfield. What are you expecting out of this group this year? You know, in, in talking to Coach Tim Watson, this is exactly what they want. Um, you know, they didn't ask for the schedule that they got, but if you look at it in, 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 in hindsight, I think they're very they're pleased with with what they're going to have what they have to face on a week-to-week basis. He wants to build a program there. He's not there yet, and he knows he's not there yet, but he was taking step-by-step step, uh, to, to build a program to where they will be a team to reckon with year after year. When you talk playoff picture, when you talk division championships, you will always want to think about Cedar Creek, and that's the way Tim Watson wants that program to, to eventually get to. You know, I think this year... Obviously, Bill Melton is clearly the face of, the, of that team. You know, uh, when, you, when you look on the field and you watch him play, you clearly get, get – it doesn't take long to figure out who Bill Melton is and, and the fact that he's one of the best high school football players, in, not only in the state but in the country. That clearly sticks out. But they've also got a tremendous amount of, of, of uh, quality guys that you would say are the supporting cast. Linemen like Owen Bowles. You got a running back, a linebacker, and Isaiah Watson. You got a lot of other guys that are going to fill in spots this year. You know, so while Cedar Creek's, you know, everyone says, "Oh, Bo Melton, Bo Melton," and and Bo, don't get me wrong, Bo is is tremendous. 
there's some other guys around him that are some pretty good football players too that are going to help to help this team. And I think, you know, I think it did, you know, you look at the schedule and people say, man, they have a tough schedule, but you know what? Look at it from the other side of it. Look at, look at what, what's the opponent think when they have to play Cedar Creek, man, they got to, we got to play Cedar Creek this week. That's a tough game. And I think that is going to be the mentality that opponents have. And that's the mentality that Tim Watson wants the opponents to have because he wants to develop this program and put it at a point where it can be in the conversation in South Jersey Group 2 with a Haddonfield, with a West Deptford, um, in the likes of like a Delcy in, in three. He wants to be a perennial power, and he's taking the steps right now to get there. And like I said, they're not there yet, but they're going to be. Kevin, we touched on this with uh, Coach Frank Fusatella from Williamstown, uh, that American division, but I wanted to get into real quick for about a minute or so the the uh, national division, really interesting division with Clearview, Delcy, uh, Timber Creek Eastern, Paul the Sixth, and Cherry Hill East. How do you see that division shaking out this year? Um, well, I, th- I think it, it starts with Timber Creek and it ends with Timber Creek. You know, uh, as long as nothing changes – uh, as far as the, the situation involving the investigation behind Timber Creek, and if that team stays the way it is and there's no no changes to, to the roster, I think Timber Creek is clearly a team that can run the table in that division, and they are capable of running the table in South Jersey for this year. They, you know, they are that good. And, uh, you know, they're... They're they're like anybody else. They put the uniform on. They put the, the helmet on. They you know tire shoes the same as everybody else. But they've got a little bit more talent than, than everybody else right now. And uh, you know it's going to take it's going to take nearly a perfect game I think from a, from an opponent to beat them. You know they open up at Delcy next Friday night, and uh, that's going to be a that's going to be should be a, a, a pretty decent test. You know for Timber Creek, find out exactly where they are and see how see what it's like now to play a game for real with, you know, basically if you look at it, you know, given the situation that they're in, all eyes have been on Timber Creek for, for many, many a week now. And, you know, it'd be interesting. It's just going to be interesting to see how the kids react on the football field. I think they'll be fine. I think Rob Hinton has done a, a, a really nice job of maintaining the focus and hoping, helping these kids stay, you know, have a little bit of tunnel vision and not let the outside bother them. You know, and, and, the, and the talk that's going on. I think Timber Creek is clearly the class of that division, and they are obviously one of the best teams in South Jersey. Good stuff, Kevin. Appreciate it as always. We'll uh, we'll be catching up with you throughout the season. Thanks, bud. All right, thanks again. I appreciate it. No problem. That was uh, Kevin Minnick of the Courier Post. Always great to catch up with him and talk a little high school football.